worked out way better. I just got it out of the glaze kiln. By bending over the tips, uh, it really kind of locked it together. Even if these weren't stuck, it was it was rigid enough to get through bisque firing. And then obviously from there, I was able to just kind of hold it and dip it in some glaze. So I can lay it right on the shelf and it's not going to stick. But I want to, it's, it's, it's obvious to me as well that these holes are a little bigger than I should have made them. So in the next version, I'm going to make them smaller, but kind of in different spots. There's only, I think, one hole that's so big I can't get a, maybe it's this one right here. Can't get a marble to stay in it. And I really was not interested in going like a real symmetrical pattern. But look at that. That's something I noticed is it would be a much better to shove these together more to kind of raise these up enough to where it won't do that. But I can kind of fill those whole lines with marble, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fill this up and then have some smaller marbles and we'll kind of fill in some gaps and, and I'm going to throw this in the kiln and we're going to see if we can just slump the marbles in. Well, it's going to be hard to carry with this middle tray being open, but I'm going to stack some in the middle once I get this in the kiln, and then we're going to fire this off. Well, it's the next morning, and this just got out of its cone 016 firing. Let me show you what happened. I have two different types of marbles in here, and I didn't think about the fact didn't think about the fact that they might react differently. A lot of them turn kind of frosty, but the ones I tested stayed nice and shiny. So, not really digging the frostiness. So I've been kind of debating how do I want to finish this off. Probably saw in the background, I kind of bent these under themselves, make it a little more tidy. But these are just practice pieces. The most important thing is that the holes are not going to be too big to let my marbles fall through. But I think in this case I want to leave it kind of rough. Um, so I want to see if I can just kind of prop up. Now, now I've, I've thought about whether or not I should put some sort of release agent on this because if it sticks, it's really going to be a son of a gun to get off. But I just want to use something big, kind of tamp it down. It's going to go bad, it's going to go bad right now. And it's because the, you know, these are not slipped and scored, they're just kind of pushed together. I noticed, for example, this one is completely detached, but I've gone ahead and gotten a kiln shelf, and I'm going to see if I can do the old flipperoo and just get the whole thing on, and we'll carry it on the kiln shelf and stick it in the kiln all at one time. Well, I'm going to go throw this in the kiln before anything breaks. Well, gosh darn it, I thought the hardest part was going to be getting this on the shelf. 
and I have some furniture, so I thought I had plenty of room, you know, get my hands under there. No. First thing, this, this one right here is under here, just dinked on the wall slightly and broke off. And then, I don't know if I touched it with my wrist ever so slightly. I mean, it is just stupid fragile. I need to come up with a better way. But dang it, I'm going to continue because I want to see, uh, let's fail hard here and figure out what else is going to go wrong after firing and take it all the way through. All right, so it's the next morning. This is now bisque fired. Let's see if we can get this out. No breaking it anymore. We'll get it back into the studio. Now, it's bisque fired, but more of these have disconnected. And if I can keep them in the right spot, I can maybe get glaze to kind of hold them together. But I am not optimistic. So here's my thought. I'm going to flip it again. Well, this was a frustrating fail. Um, I knew, I'd done this some time before, and I knew that I was going to have some issues with these sticking together. And it's just not feasible to slip and score at every contact point, but I was really hopeful. How was I going to glaze this thing? That was a fundamental question. If, great, you got it into the bisque kiln, but if you can't hold it, and the, I mean, what am I going to do? How am I going to spray this with glaze and then get it onto a shelf if it's not all going to stick together? I can. My thought was, well, if it's stuck together, say like this, I could lay it on a plastic bat like this and I could spray it with some glaze and then I could carefully oh see I could carefully lift it off and put it on a shelf and I'd fire it and that glaze would stick them together and then we'd take it out and I'd put some marbles in the gaps and then we'd refire it at a low temperature and kind of melt them in but that just did not happen so um, I'd even considered maybe like making these noodles um, like serrated, like when they extrude with like little ribs, so they kind of self slip and score. But I'm just not sure. Um, I was hoping somebody might have a good idea how to do something like this. Weaving is possible, but boy, it is tricky to try to lift and weave these things, you know. <laughs> I don't know what you call this art. <laughs> But yeah, that's frustrating. I did not fully think through how I was going to move this this through the process to get glaze on it. Uh, my, my thought was really only that glaze was going to help hold it together. But yeah, what a bummer. What a waste of time. And I'm kind of thinking now, what do I do with all these bisqueware things? I could do something with them, I suppose. Maybe just garbage. But yeah, kind of a big fat waste of time. So if you have any ideas on how I should have done it differently, and maybe somebody will look at this and go, oh, you know, you should have done it this way. Uh, I'd be interested to hear that. Yeah, I definitely think I'm onto something here.